Hey everyone, today's challenge is, can we laser cut surface mount stencils out of Mylar? Let's find out. I managed to source some Mylar, well I think it's Mylar, from a company in Victoria, Australia. Uh, they're called Imaginique Design in Victoria, Australia, Diamond Creek. So I'm going to give this a shot at seeing if I can do some stencils in my laser cutter for the Neo 7 segment display. So let's open it up and see what's inside. I'm obviously doing it outside of a normal unexpected mail video because I, although I have a lot of mail, I could do another one. I think three in a week is a bit much, but I couldn't wait. So I wanted to open this up and see what's inside. Wow, I'm doing a bad job at this as usual. Okay, my last stencil film, ustencil.com.au, hmm, don't know what that is. So this is actually designed for stencils for airbrushing and spray painting, I believe. But it might be something that we can cut on the laser cutter, it's 5mm, not millimetres, but 5mm, so that's like a percentage of a millimetre in thickness. Might just open it up, take one out, see what it looks like. Oh, it's quite dirty. Okay, there it is. It's transparent, obviously. So uh, not really sure what you're going to be able to pick up on the camera. It's a bit dirty, but that's fine. That's actually okay. So we're going to see if we can print up some Neo Seven segment stencils on this. So let's get into laying out some stencils. Okay, here we are in Eagle with the Neo Seven segment revision two board up and what I want to do is isolate just the solder pads so I can export that as a PDF I believe is my only option in this case or maybe a DXF I'll have to have a look I think it's going to be a PDF and then I'm going to take it into Lightburn which is my laser cutting software and lay it out and save it down and then go and try and laser cut it and see what happens so first thing we want to do is remove all the layers that we don't want so in this case it's pretty much going to be just everything for now so I'm just going to hide all the layers and I'm going to work out which one's going to be. I'm pretty sure it's cream that we want. Yeah, that's bottom cream. So that's a bit useless. There we go. As you can see here, that's where the solder pads are going to be. And just to confirm that, if I go to the, the top layer, so you can see that that's where the pads are. And these are all the traces. The traces sit underneath the solder mask and the pads. It uses the cream layer to extract that out. So we'll turn that back off. So we just have the cream layer. And I believe I can just go to File, Export. I tried DXF and I'll try to see if I can print a PDF from it. I'm not sure which way is the best way to go. Browse, Output, okay, here's 7 segment DXF. We'll save that. Millimeters, always use vector font to use wire width, fill areas. Yes, fill areas we want. Go OK. You can see it's popped in here. But I'm pretty sure it's actually going to have to be a PDF that I need. Pretty sure. So I'm just going to go print. Printers borders are larger than the current values except the larger values. Sure. Print to PDF file. Okay. Save. Calibrate 1 1. Scale factor 1. Page limit. Yeah, okay, that's all fine. Okay. So I've got a, a PDF and I've got a DXF. I've just hit spacebar on the Mac. Okay, that looks pretty good for the PDF. Let's just try dragging that into Lightburn. Not done this before. Oh, there we go. That actually looks pretty good. So there are all our outlines. So all I really need to do is work out how, how big I want it to be. So I need to leave room on the top to put paste and to sticky tape it. Doesn't really need a lot of room on the sides. And I want to add a box around it to cut. Starting it there, but it's okay. What I can actually do now is select them both. I'm just going to center them vertically so it's in the middle with enough room on the top. Now I'm just going to grab them all together. I'm going to, I believe, group. That's group. Now I can just move it over here, about there. So I'm just going to try one for now, but what I could easily do is just grab this and use the array tool and tell it to do, I don't know, don't know how many I could fit. Five, not quite, if I decrease the gaps, yeah, I can't do five. 
could definitely do four across. Might even be able to do two uh, reverse direction. Mm, no, I want to maximize per sheet. But anyway, cancel that. We're just going to do one for now. So I'm going to save this down. Stencil mask. It's a light green file. Let's go laser cut it. Okay, this is my laser cutting machine. So I'm going to open up the file. This is what we created on the other one. So I'm running light burn on both machines. Just need to check the power settings and the speed. So it's currently set to 100 millimeters per second and 20% maximum power of the laser. My laser is actually, the unit itself is set to 90%. So this will be about 15. I'm prepared to do as many different test cuts on this one sheet as I can. If I need to destroy it, I will, just to make sure that I've got it cutting fast enough, I don't melt the edges and I get a good result. So let's turn on the laser and see how it goes. Okay, I've got the mylar and I'm putting it in. It's a little bit dirty. It's going to be a test sheet. It's a bit bigger than A4, so it's not quite sitting inside the frame very well, but that's okay. Let's put the lid down and let's get cutting. Okay, I have no idea if that worked. Let's find out. Okay, well that's a good start. Let's, it's probably gonna be stuck to the base. Okay, smells terrible. You can see there's a, a few tabs that might not have come through properly. I might have to put something down underneath. I think all these pieces now are almost stuck to the bottom. I'll have to clean that off. So my cut bed's a little bit sticky because of all the acrylic I cut and the glue on the paper. So I should have probably put something down first. But did that work? Well, let's have a closer inspection, shall we? Okay, so here's the, the final stencil. I want to compare it to the stencil I got from JLC PCB the other day and the actual PCB itself. I need to make sure a few things that obviously it lines up and there's been no stretch and I got the scale one to one. And the other thing we need to look for is whether the process of actually cutting the holes with the laser hasn't melted the openings too much and made them too much bigger than the stencil and the pad area. So let's start off by making sure that everything lines up. Okay, that actually looks pretty good, as you can see. I mean, I'm not holding it great, but everything lines up pretty well. I'm trying to get the reflection happening so you can see all the grooves. Okay, so scale-wise, we're fine. Let's just have a look at the size of the holes, shall we? The holes are pretty good. I think if anything, they might have opened up a tiny, tiny amount. I can see some steel around the fringes of the holes. But at the end of the day, all that's really gonna mean is that when you put paste down, you might end up putting a little bit more paste than you need because it's gonna go right to the edges. But the actual pressure of the, the paste as it reflows will bring it towards the center of the pad. And so it's not gonna overflow or anything. So I think we have a successful laser cut stencil that I can include with the Neo 7 segment displays in the kits. For those of you that want to build them, it'll be much easier to do with a stencil than it will doing it by putting paste on each pad with a syringe. I promise I will make clean versions for you because that is just pretty <laughs> gnarly looking. But there it is, successful laser cutting of stencils. Okay, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, Check out my links at the bottom of the description for my Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.